Welcome to the Everywhere Podcast. Hi. Hello. We're so excited to be here. My name is Christina Soontornvat. You are watching Plot on the Spot. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to quickly go around and introduce ourselves. So I am the author of the middle grade novel, A Wish in the Dark, and also the chapter book series, Diary of an Ice Princess. And um, Sarah, do you want to go next to introduce yourself? My seven-year-old just walked in all this. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm Sarah Malinowski. I'm the author of Whatever After, um, and also of the series Upside Down Magic, which I co-write with Emily Jenkins and Lauren Miracle. Awesome. Max, you want to go? Yes, I am Max Braille, the author of the Last Kids on Earth series, authored by me, illustrated by Douglas Holgate. Uh, this is the newest book in the series, June's Wild Flight. Awesome. I'm really excited about that one. Okay, your turn, Stu. I'm Stuart Gibbs. I'm the author of the Fun Jungle series, of which the newest uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex came out in March. And I also do the Spy School series, uh, which uh, Spy School Revolution will be out just a few weeks away in October. So. <laughs> That'll feel like forever. <laughs> it seems a very long way away. Yes. And then we have Jenny Kamen, who is signing for us. So thank you so much for interpreting for us today, Jenny. Okay, so in this session, we are talking about plot. Plot is important for every story. So we thought that we would give all of you uh, some insight into how we work on the plots for our books. We're each going to give you um, some tips. So each of us has one tip to share, and then we're going to challenge ourselves to put that tip into action and demonstrate with a fun game that we're calling plot on the spot. Um, and we're gonna, I, got, I guess I'll get started. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so my tip for writing plot, which by the way, you, do you guys, do you like writing, do you like the plot part, the plotting part of writing a book? Yes. That, I love it. <laughs> that's yes the favorite no. part. Yeah. Yes, yes and no, I, th I, could say, I think it's the most, um, Difficult sometimes, but also the most exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What and Stu, you said yes. I, I, no, I, 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 it's my favorite part, I think. Right. When you're plotting, you're not actually writing. You're just coming up with ideas and, and, mm -hmm. and playing around and, and then you know, uh, the writing part is like <clears throat> that's work. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd prefer just to plot all the time and like, <laughs> like just with the books instead, okay? <laughs> yeah, and then you could just plug your brain into the computer and it would just like come out in perfect words. I, I agree. I like that too. It's, yeah. it's fun. But it's, it is tricky. I, and I feel like it took me a long time to learn how to do it right. So my trick for writing a plot is I think about the character and I always start off by asking myself two questions about the character. I say, what is it that they think they want? And then what is it that they actually truly need inside? And then those two questions help me shape my plot. So for like, for example, in the first Diary of an Ice Princess, Princess Lena, who has magical powers over ice and snow, uh, thinks that she wants to just go to a regular school and be like a regular kid and fit in with everyone. But what she truly wants inside is to like have confidence in herself and like accept who she is and, and recognize that she's a special person. So the, uh, the, her, the thing that she thinks she wants, that's like all the fun hijinks. Like she tries to go to a school and um, she keeps messing up and her magic keeps slipping out. And uh, she's worried that she's gonna get um, uncovered as this ice princess. Um, and then the actual like part of the story uh, has to do with her, her true need, her true desire. So that's, that's my tip. Um, and then now, now you guys are gonna test me on it, right? <laughs> okay. okay so now so this is how we're going to play the game so i am going to have to make up a plot on the spot but it can't be just any story because sarah and max and Stu are all gonna like show a funky prop from their house that i'm gonna have to incorporate into the story and make an, a, an actual part of the story does it have to be funky i don't know if mine is funky per se <laughs> I thought everything in your house is funky, Max. It, it is, but <laughs> I don't know. Everything in your house is funky, Max. <laughs> <laughs> I'm funky. <laughs> okay, all right. I think I'm ready. 
Okay. You ready? I'm going to show you my thing. Ready? I'm ready. Okay. It's an empty gumball machine. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right, Max. No. Toilet paper. Where did you get that? <laughs> I give you ten dollars for that bag. I've never seen that in in years. Uh, um, That's terrible. Uh, I have here uh, what I've heard from many people is is now a torture device because it's a recorder, and many people have small children in their homes, <laughs> old people playing the recorders nonstop in their homes, and uh, it sounds like this. <laughs> Hot cross buns. <laughs> My husband has a recorder. He keeps it in the car and he plays it when he gets to stop stoplights. Is that what, really? that's weird? He's yeah. going to be mad at me that I revealed that. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm coming up with a plot. Okay. okay. This, this is a story about a girl named Annabelle. I'm yep. saying that because she was just popping in. I don't know if she's still right. there. Okay. This is a story fine. about a girl named Annabelle who thinks that what she wants most of all is to win the national recorder performance championship. And she practices and practices and practices. But but what she really truly wants is to um, to stop putting so much pressure on herself. She's like this perfect person and she always has to do everything right. But she wants to just be able to like let loose and make mistakes and have it be okay. I know I'm coming to the toilet paper. I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> okay, so she's like she's like practicing every day and like she's getting better and better. She has a nemesis who is like also going for the national recorder championships and she decides that she is going to take out her nemesis by mm. stealing all the toilet paper in her nemesis's house. Oh. So this girl has no toilet paper. She cannot perform in the performance. <laughs> Annabelle realizes that this is a horrible thing and she decides to make up with her nemesis and they're going to band together. And instead of trying to um, win the recorder championship, they're gonna do like a silly dance on the stage. And they, in, in to solidify their friendship, they go to a gumball machine and they get gumballs out and they stick it into their recorder so they know they can't play any sound, thereby by winning the hearts and minds of America. Ooh, wait, 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 what's the title? One already, right off the bat. What's the title? It is. What's the title? I have one. I wait, think you yep. got. Yep. Banding together. Okay, what? Uh, Banding together, because they're in the band. Band I'm going to call my agent on your behalf, Christina. <laughs> wow. Okay, amazing. Oh, my God. I'm so glad I'm done. Okay, who wants to go next? <laughs> Stu? I'll go, I'll go next. Okay. Uh, right. okay. I'll go. Max can take it home. Um, okay. Uh, my, my tip, um, because uh, I, I find a lot of time I go to schools and, and their kids are talking about uh, – what they, <clears throat> the stuff they're working on. And, and I find a lot of the time uh, kids are told, uh, write what you know to come up with a story. And I find that, that I, I get where that piece of advice is coming from, but I think it doesn't really work because, uh, especially when you're a kid, because every kid knows the same thing, which is school. And if you write what you know, it's just about school or your soccer team or something like that. So, so when I'm coming up with plots, uh, I like to uh, write about what fascinates me. And I think that's what, what uh, people should do is they should write what, so if, so everybody's fascinated by something, whether it's a sport or maybe a, a kind of animal or a place on earth. And if you go and you, and you research and you do like a deep dive on that place, like when I was, when I was doing uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex here, I, I always loved dinosaurs as a kid. And I, I thought, well, I wonder, I, I realized I didn't quite know how dinosaur fossils ended up coming from uh, the, the dig to the museum. And so I went and I interviewed people who specialized in this. And, uh, and when I did that, that helped me start to get all these ideas. And that really started to drive the plot while I was, while I was doing that interview. So, uh, so that helped me build a story. That's awesome. That's great. Okay. Well, we've got some objects that are going to fascinate you. 
okay, let's let's see it. It's not gonna be toilet paper. The, the bar is already so high with, <laughs> together. I don't even, I don't even okay. know what I'm gonna do. Here. All okay. right, Sarah, Sarah, what do you have? I have a banana. <laughs> yeah, fascinating. Totally fascinating. This time around, I have a no. no. <laughs> I have I have a um a a, play, a, a video game controller, a PlayStation controller to be specific. Okay. okay. And I have a gigantic. Oh, cool. Ooh. Ooh. This could represent the ocean. Whatever you want. No, no, no. It's going to be a, a conch. That's what I'm going to make. Okay. <laughs> so, um, all right. So, so uh, if you guys will give me a couple hours to go do some, <laughs> no, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pretend like I've done a tremendous amount of research on all of these things. So, uh, uh, the, so I would start out with uh, with a kid who uh, uh, is, uh, you know, he he's a gamer. He he doesn't really leave his house very much. He's always just playing his video games and everything. But then he finds out, uh, as anyone who's done banana research has in the past couple of years that actually all bananas are come from trees that are pretty much related. And there is a banana blight that is possibly going to wipe out all the bananas on earth. And we will have no bananas, no banana bread, no uh, banana flavored gum. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and he's terrified by this whole thing. So, so he decides that he's got to go down uh, with a crack team of uh, other kids who've been picked by a nefarious uh, uh, organization to stop banana blight. They're going to be sent down. Uh, they've been they've been picked because of their great video game skills. Like they've they've gone through sort of like the last Starfighter. Uh, where they recognize that these particular guys are really great at a game called Banana Blast. And so they take them and they take them down to, uh, to uh, uh, Ecuador, where all the bananas are grown in that area, and find, and, and then, uh, you know, there's all sorts of uh, shenanigans as, as they start, you know, this team has just been thrown together very quickly, but eventually our, our hero does realize that uh, it's actually due to an invasion of, of, of uh, nuclear radiated conks that are... Uh, <laughs> somehow become able to go on land and start uh, and are spreading conch disease uh, and, <laughs> and be defeated with that rarest of commodities, toilet paper. Uh, I don't know what that's a about. Right, so, <clears throat> so they build a barricade of toilet paper around the banana trees and are able to prevent them from the sentient conchs that have been invading them and our, our heroes learn to defeat them, save the bananas of the world, and are rewarded with the knowledge that sometimes getting out of the house and not playing video games is good as long as there's no virus that prevents it. <laughs> Yay! Good job! <laughs> I disagree with the message, but I like the story. <laughs> it sounds very appealing. Right. <laughs> that, that could be the title right there. There you go. <laughs> Excellent. No, I All right, Sarah. I say I was gonna. I gave you the banana so he could have someone slip on the banana peel, but oh. <laughs> you took it a step further. Uh, okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, Sarah, you go. That's a, that's a big part. There's an early scene where yeah. all, <laughs> a big banana scene, and, and all the bananas have fallen. They're all like, "Whoa!" And <laughs> on yeah, of oh. <laughs> Next time. Okay, <laughs> so. Um, okay, so when I'm writing books, the way that I do it is I always think I start off with something really fun, a very fun idea, um, and then I give it a big twist. For example, in Whatever After, uh, Abby finds that Abby falls into a fairy tale. That's the fun part. And then the twist is that she messes the fairy tale up. That's the twist. Or Upside Down Magic. Uh, the characters go to ma magic school. Nori goes to magic school, but then she discovers that her magic is really wonky and messed up. So that's the twist. So the twist always has to raise the stakes. Sometimes yeah, when I talk to kids about this at school, uh, they'll say, like, oh, you get to go to the zoo. That's really fun. And then their twist is that the zoo is closed. That is less fun. Nobody wants to read that book. So the twist has to really, really raise the stakes and make it even more fun. That is how I write the books. Hit me with your props, guys. I, I love it. Okay. All right. Here's mine. Dragon. You can decide if this is a scary dragon or an adorable dragon. Okay, I got a dragon. I can work with a dragon. Okay. I'm afraid now. <laughs> All right. Ready? Yes. A Reese's peanut butter cup. No. no. A Reese's egg. A Reese's egg. Right. But that's egg. a 
up in egg shape, correct? Okay. It's a different, it's different, a different feeling. Oh my goodness. A clown nose. Or just the nose part of the clown. You're it could be the clown. You can you could use the whole clown. Is it an evil clown? <laughs> That's really Oh my okay. Oh, okay. So I have a clown, a chocolate, and a dragon. And I am. <laughs> it's not a chocolate. It's a no chocolate peanut butter egg. It's just a. It's the best thing that ever existed. We don't okay. have that's that's we don't have the the, the chocolate eggs. Okay. For pasta. Oh. Um, okay, so I'm going to start. Let's see. It's going to be a birthday party at some. Uh, it's going to be this girl's birthday party. We're going to call her um, Sherry. Okay, it is Sherry's birthday party, and she's very excited. And she has a clown at the birthday party. Okay, but there's something a little bit off about the clown. The clown is like making weird recommendations and stuff, and all kinds of fun. And she gets all these presents, and she gets all these presents, and she's opening the presents. And and it feels like nothing. No, none, none of these presents really know her. They don't get. It's as if her friends don't really know her. And like there's um, like a book of something that she's already read or doesn't really like, or um, an art set when she's not really that into art. Or I don't. What are other some presents that she wouldn't that really show that they don't really know her? Like a, 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 a <laughs> toilet paper. Right, like that would be an odd present to get toilet paper. But then clown. So gives her a special egg, okay? And says, take this egg. I'm getting rid of the chocolate part, Max. It's just an egg, okay? And take this egg and put it overnight. And you're, what you really wish for will happen in the morning, okay? So she goes to sleep and the next day, the egg is cracked, okay? She thought it was maybe a chocolate egg, but it's all cracked. And she's like, well, what was it? What was inside the egg? And then she hears squeaking and in her closet, she discovers, a baby dragon, okay? Um, and then the two of them um, are the best of friends and they have all kinds of adventures together. And that's the end of the story. <laughs> I loved the setup. I loved the idea of the birthday party that that turned out well. Yeah, the, and then, yeah, so the, the twist, I'm trying to think how that fits into my thing. The twist is that, uh, she thought none of her friends really loved her and no knew her, and then she ends up with this dragon. And then eventually, I would go on to try to figure out what this dragon teaches her about life that she didn't already know before. Yes, you can write that later. Yay! Yay! There is everything you write. Now, now. Is everything you write what historical like that or no? <laughs> <laughs> is that all historical? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. My turn. Oh, yeah. You're up, Max. Okay, sorry, I lost track. Okay, um, so right. my sort of like thing is I like to take kind of like everyday, um, normal, boring situations, um, and I add something sort of um, crazy, like a big twist, basically. Sarah, good word, twist. Um, I got crazy, like out for something outrageous. Um, I like the. I didn't know I wanted to be a writer when I was a kid, but I knew that I loved stories because I used to walk home from school. I would always be sort of like daydreaming, imagining, and I think about how boring like the walk home from school was. I mean, like I wish like that I had a like a like a um, like a hover skateboard, a hoverboard, or I wish that like zombies would come like screaming out of that house or something crazy would happen. So all of my different series, like so, um, last kid on earth. It's um, he's Jack's on the school bus on the way to school, regular day, and then suddenly portals open up in the sky and um, interdimensional monsters and zombies arrive and he has to battle them and everything changes. Um, Erie Elementary, uh, a sort of regular kid, Sam Graves, um, becomes hall monitor and discovers that his school is actually alive and it survives by, um, by eating um, students and he has to protect the students. And then um, Galactic Hot Dogs, which I think, yes, okay. Uh, back to the first book at the, the hot dog series. Um, regular kid is staring out the window, sort of daydreaming, wishing that his life is more exciting. And then, um, it's, it's sort of a, like an alien, um, it's just a like strange alien blob comes screaming through the sky and crashes into the backyard. And so, all those things are like every sort of like almost boring, like this day is lousy, um, situations that become really, um, fantastic and filled with adventure and, and 
often monsters and bad jokes to get there somehow. I'm shocked there's bad jokes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah me too. Absolutely <laughs> shocked. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. I love it. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. yeah, I have to go get my prop, but I, I'll be right back. Okay. I'll All start right. with mine. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoa. Is that it was actually my doll from when I was a kid named Susie. <laughs> Aww. Baby Susie. Baby Susie. <laughs> Aww. Baby Susie. Aww. Baby Susie and. Oh, this is. This is a uh, Ripley. Uh, Ripley. Uh, Ripley. 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 Oh, Ripley. Okay. Ripley. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> he's a dog. Okay. <laughs> I have a dog. A, a creepy, really, really creepy doll. <laughs> you. I can't believe it. And a <laughs> What's the it turn? Turn it. Okay. Let's uh, see. So my character, um, little Stewie. <laughs> is uh, <laughs> is let's see he stuck babysitting for his little sister and um let's see they have a dog and he doesn't want to walk the dog he's not really up for it wait, sarah what was your thing again oh wait the creepy doll okay, cool. um <laughs> right so he doesn't want to walk the dog so his little sister um <laughs> christina he sends his little sister christina to walk the dog and he realizes that's kind of a bad idea. I should probably, I'm babysitting. I should probably be in charge here. And he goes out and he um, is looking for his little sister and he finds a dog all alone. The leash is sort of like dangling, like on the ground, like not dangling, you know, on the ground, like creepy, like, and his sister is missing. And let's Ooh. see, he's like, I'm gonna, I gotta find my sister. And he looks at his watch because he's a little kid who wears a watch and realizes his parents will be home from the movie in like 20 minutes, so you know, 20 minutes. So he sort of, he starts calling her name. He's like, Christina, little, little Stewie, little Stewie. He's like, Christina, Christina, where are you? Where are you, where are you, where are you? And um, he comes like crashing around a corner towards another corner and sees sitting uh, on the sidewalk that very, very, very creepy doll. Um, and the dog is with him the whole time, Ripley's with him. So he and Ripley are like, we're gonna find her, we're gonna find your owner, my sister. And they find instead the doll. And they're like, oh man. And the doll looks just like his sister. And he looks like it appears that his sister has been turned into a doll. And the doll is holding um, a turnip with a bite taken out of it. And so uh, the dog sniffs the turnip, uh, do chasing, uh, bolting down the, down the street to, to uh, the old, old creepy. Uh, there's, a, there's someone on the block that it's every scared of. It's old creepy Miss Milanowski, <laughs> the neighborhood witch. And um and they, go, they, they knock on the door, but there's no answer. They go on back and they discover that there's a um, like a turnip field. She's planted turnips everywhere, and and one is like obviously uh, clearly missing. And so um they go to that spot where it was missing. Um they place the turnip back into the ground, and as they do that, sort of everything shakes. The turnip is all sort of like that. And um at that very moment, they hear a loud roar, and that roar is in fact the engine of uh, the parents' car. The parents are coming home. Time's running out, um, but then another roar, another shake, and uh, with the turnip is sort of sucked back into the ground. Uh, the doll turns back into his little sister. He grabs his little sister, and then it's a race back home, uh, sort of Ferris Bueller's Day Off uh, uh, <laughs> style, so leaping over fences, escaping old man Milanowski's house, and, uh, and they get back at home just in time uh, to save the, to, uh, to, well, to save his own day, because otherwise his parents would have grounded him, much like those turnips were in the ground. <laughs> Yay! That was not good. This is fun. I've been still writing my story in my head and <laughs> as we're all talking. Yeah, right? I'm like fixing mine. I'm like, my, oh, mine how, needs... how would you fix yours, Christina? <laughs> uh, no, I was like, my, mine needs more like creepy. I liked that creepiness. Like you go and your your sister has been turned into a doll. That's just so scary mm -hmm. and creepy. I love bite, that. Taking a big bite out of a turnip. I tried to actually take a bite out of it and it's really hard and I can't. <laughs> I was just going to go like, <laughs> but I couldn't do it. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Well, we have a little bit of time left. Should we do like a round robin? Do we want to do a round robin or do we want to, or we could also answer some reader questions. What are we yeah. like five minutes left? Uh, yeah. How much time, uh, what, what's the bum? Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's do, 
let's do let's do some questions because okay. we did lots of plot stuff. I think it was okay. awesome well, uh, because uh, so we had some readers send in some questions beforehand, and one of the ones that they asked is about movies and television shows and how writing for movies or television shows is different from writing books. And I know that. So Sarah has a movie that's coming out soon. I will. I'll put out Magic will be out this summer. But yay. Yeah, yay. I'm so excited about that. And that's on Disney, right? That's on the Disney Channel. Okay. And Max has a show that's out now. Yes. So The Last Kids on Earth is um, is out now. So it's, uh, so uh, book, it's book one, which is a special 66 Minutes on Netflix, came out um, some months ago. And now just, uh, just recently, um, book two, which is 10 episodes. Um, came out and it's uh, sort of following book two of the, of the book series, um, which is The Last Kids on Earth and the Zombie Parade. That's, That's awesome. it's now on Netflix. And and Stu, you have a you have the screenwriting background. Right, we right. all love movies. Well, I'm writing I'm writing the screenplay for a Spy School movie. Oh, okay. Yes, that's right. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. So yeah, I so just like let's talk about how do movies in, influence your writing or vice versa. How's it different? How's the how's it the same? Any way you want to go with it? Um, just uh, Sarah, do you want to start? Um, well, I've never actually written for TV movies. For me, I've only gotten to like go to the sets and see them. And it's just, I, I don't, so I can't really give tips on how to write it, but I can just say it's like really fascinating and mind blowing to actually see characters that you've created be alive in front of you. It's really, it's really wild. And and when you were writing Upside Down Magic, did you ever, were you ever imagining like, oh, this would this would be a movie one day? Did you do you think about it like cinematically as you're as you're writing the scenes? Not really. I've always been more of a reader than um, I mean. I never studied writing screenplays or anything like that. And I was just such an avid reader as a kid. So I really break up my like I, when I write my books, I see it in terms of character and plot and story. And uh, whenever they're trying to apply apply it to a movie or a TV show, they're always totally rewriting it and reworking it anyway. So it's never exactly what it, it's never exactly what I wrote. Uh-huh. That's cool. Um, and how about Max? How about you? I was very, like, I was much more, much less of a reader and more of, like, a movie geek when I was a kid. So, like, I'm, I try to write books that, like, sort of feel like movies. Um, I collect novels. I was looking down earlier, you mentioned Last Starfighter, because I had the Last Starfighter novelization, but I don't have it here. I have it at home. But, like, I have, like, tons and tons and tons of, like, movie novelizations just that I keep. Um... Conan the Barbarian, The Goonies, E.T., take tons of them. Um, like, I find that's, like, a helpful way if I'm stuck writing a scene, I'll sort of think of, like, okay, what's, like, a similar scene I've seen in a movie, and then I'll see how they wrote it, because it's, like, it's such, there's such different formats, different mediums, um, but they also have so much in common. So, I don't know, I, I very, I like to picture, um, I like to write books that feel like movies and write scenes that feel like, like movie scenes. Um, that's one of the reasons I love working with an illustrator, because you get to, like, show the big stuff that you want to see. I also have here um, a copy of yeah, that's... Stuart's um, autobiography. <laughs> Read that, Unsold Television. <laughs> what is that? Unsold Television. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is right. Oh, my pilot. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. get me. That's very different. <laughs> 117 people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I, I started uh, writing. I, I was a screenwriter before, uh, I, and, and I created TV shows before. I uh, I wrote books, um, but and uh, and there's there's uh, there's quite a few middle grade authors out there who also did this, and and we realized that what we all learned uh, is structure because you you have a, a, it's much more rigid structuring for TV or film. You have a very limited number of pages uh, to tell your story, and so a lot of us uh, are like we're very serious outliners about uh, and. and uh, when, when it comes down to, to breaking our stories out, I, I still think very visually, I think. But but it, now that I'm adapting uh, the book Spy School for a movie, uh, the, you know all the all my readers are like, well, you can't change anything, and you're like, no, no, you have to change something because uh, uh, it's not the same thing. You have to figure out ways to make it more visual, but also to like make the story more concise. So so there 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 are a book and a movie are two different things. You have to be aware that when there's a movie adaptation of a book. Uh, it'll change, hopefully, in ways that you really appreciate and not ways that you're really annoyed about. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's awesome. Well, and the, hopefully, if you're doing the screenplay, you'll get to you'll get to make sure it's the way that you. Somewhat, but I still have to make changes, <laughs> right? So. Yeah. 
Well, that's that's so great. I, this is that's all the time that we have for right now, you guys. But I, I'm so I had a lot of fun playing plot on the spot with you. Hi guys. Um, Ma good. Max, please mail me that roll of toilet paper. After I will. I will. Off the phone. You want to okay. do a book too? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The untold plots also. <laughs> okay. Well, thank, thank you, everyone. You should Thanks. do it again next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this has been the Everywhere Book Fest. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. <laughs> thank you.